Welcome back and congratulations for making it to the last video of our four part watercolor series. If you haven't seen the previous videos, make sure to check those out in the playlist. Today we get to put together many of the techniques and concepts that we've learned so far. We'll be painting a watercolor wreath and I'm going to show you step by step how to do that. So let's dive in. In the previous video, we learned that there are two versions of each primary, a warm and a cool version. We learned how to create our secondary colors by using different combinations of the six primaries. We also learned about complementary colors and how we can mix them to desaturate a color. For this floral wreath, I would like to use some earthy muted colors. You can use this chart to help you come up with your own unique colors. For this project, I'm using Strathmore 500 series 140 pound watercolor paper. I've cut a few sheets to a 9 by 12 size since I'm planning to frame the final piece. I also have some scrap paper on hand to test colors. I'm using my Mary Blue paints that come in a tube so I've squeezed a small amount ahead of time so they have time to dry. I can easily re-wet them when I'm ready to paint. I want to mention that for the entire project, I will be using only two brushes, a Princeton Select round brush size 3 and a Princeton Heritage round brush size 1. As inspiration, I'm using some fresh flowers I had on hand. You don't have to use fresh flowers of course, you can always use photographs or even paint from your imagination. I will show you how to paint all the individual elements first and then I'll show you how to put them all together to create a wreath. We'll begin with this purplish flower which will be the main element, the largest flower in our wreath. With very diluted paint, I'm simply painting five circles or petals. I'm using a glass dip pen to score the veins on the petals while they're still wet. If you don't have one of these, you can use any sharp object as long as the paper is still wet. I'm also adding a little more pigment to give them some depth. I'm going to start painting the center of the flower with some lemon yellow. And now just a touch of green. Adding a warmer yellow to give it some depth. The center of this flower is very saturated so we will use a thick mixture of paint to give it a lot of contrast. Now with a clean, damp brush, I'm softening some of those edges. Now moving on to flower number two. This will be a secondary flower on our wreath. It kind of reminds me of a cone flower. So we began by painting a half circle with a little violet and then the individual petals with soft pinks and orange. Drop some more color on the petals and then start building up the center by adding a more concentrated mixture of violet and warm yellow. You can paint some smaller petals as if they are further away from you and also a green stem. To add more contrast towards the center, add another layer of violet and an additional set of petals on top of your already dry ones. As a third element, we're going to paint a fern leaf. I'm using a very diluted green and the very tip of my brush to create the thin lines and tiny leaflets on the fern. Notice how the leaf gets wider towards the bottom, so I'm adding more pressure to my brush to get the wider strokes. If you watched our second video in this series, you'll recognize this technique. It's called stumbling. So we're dabbing with the tip of our brush using a thick mixture of warm reds and orange. We are softening some of those edges with a clean, damp brush. Switching over to a smaller brush size 1 to paint the tiny green stems. I'm adding a warm yellow to the outer part of the flower and dropping in some more green on the stem to give it more depth. For the fifth element of our wreath, we are painting a flower using the same scumbling technique, but we are now using a thick mixture of warm yellow and red. We'll be using olive green to paint the stem and we'll be softening some of those edges with a clean damp brush. 
Using a thick mixture of violet, we're going to put some marks on our paper along an imaginary stem. We are then going to rinse our brush and create the lighter petals. Using a little olive green, paint the tiny stems. These last few elements are going to be very simple. They are just going to be fillers. Little elements that we can have on hand to fill in any empty spaces. So I'm just going to speed up through this last part so you can still get an idea of what they look like. Now that we've planned out what elements will go into our wreath, it's time to put it all together. Draw a circle in the middle of your paper. I'm using a plastic container. We will be adding them to our wreath in the same order in which we painted them. Start by deciding the placement of the main element. Decide how many you will be including. I will be painting five flowers, so I'm spacing them out and drawing a little circle to help me see where they will go. I'm happy with the size and placement of my main flower. Now let's move on to our second element. I'm going to hold off on painting the stems of these flowers until the very end. Continue to paint the other elements in the order in which you have them in your guide. Notice how the fern leaves are all going in the same direction. You can do this to help guide the viewer's eye. Continue to fill in your wreath. See if there are any large gaps that you can fill in with the larger elements. Some of the leaves can be painted to look as if they are behind a flower or another leaf. The last element I'm going to be adding are the tiny berries. And here is our final piece. Planning what elements will go into our wreath makes the process so much easier and enjoyable. Thanks for watching. I hope you feel more confident and inspired as you continue to grow as a watercolor artist.